Hey, welcome to Mary Shores Prepping. I'm your host, Greg. It's a difficult subject I'm going to talk about. Please bear with me. Stay with me. There's a lot to cover, and it, and it involves directly with how we prepare for our food storage and everything else like that. In the news today, in the news today, the Netherlands, the Dutch government, Netherlands is seeking to close 3,000 farms by threatening farmers with compulsory land buyouts if they refuse voluntary offers to comply with EU rules, meaning their climate change regulations, then with quote-unquote pain in the heart, the government will move forward with compulsory purchases. So you have a gun to a farmer's head who is a successful produce grower, you have a gun to his head and saying, you're going to sell me your land or else I'm going to pull the trigger. And you're not going to like the results. That's how they deal with people in this climate change. The Netherlands is the second leading producer of exported food in the world. What do you think is going to happen when this Dutch government shuts down 3,000 farms? What do you think is going to happen to the food supply? They don't care. That's what happens. As long as they are in compliance with this climate change agenda, the 2030 agenda, 3,000 farms, generation farmers, are now going to be forced to sell their land because they have no choice. That's what happens when you give up your rights, your First and Second Amendment rights. The government, these nut jobs that are in control, that are worried about a one and a half degree theoretical rise in temperature by 2050 is going to force you out of business. And China is exempt from all of this. But it gets better, folks. It gets better. Nitrogen Minister Christina Vanderval, no better offer will be coming. So you better sell now or else. Now, this next part of it is tied into this because the Dutch farmers are fighting back verbally. And they're saying, hey, America, are you seeing what's happening to us? BlackRock and other places are doing the exact same thing, and they are going to be forcing large farms out of business. Bill Gates already has 230,000 acres a farm he's not using, and he's buying as much as he possibly can just to keep it from being farmed. But ESG, you may have heard that terminology. You may not understand it. It is environmental, social criteria, and governance. And what does that mean to you? Environmental criteria examines how a business, and this is the model they apply to businesses here in the United States, Criteria examines how business performs as steward of our natural environment. And mind you, this is all tied into Agenda 2030. Waste and pollution, resource depletion, greenhouse gas emissions, industrial farms, deforestation. You can't cut down trees for wood for houses or anything else. And climate change, that's the biggest thing. Now Joe Biden says in order to, for you to do business with a federal government and you have a federal contract, you have to put in there how much energy you're using and how you are going to comply by becoming wind and solar and environmental friendly, electric cars, folks. Social criteria. Now this is where they get you. Employee relations and diversity. Where, where are you seeing this in the federal government? You're having freaks being put in positions of authority that have absolutely no business being in there. And a guy just got busted today who's supposed to be non-binary, who's a freak, dresses in women's clothing while having homosexual sex with a guy dressed in a dog and chain outfit, but he's in charge of that, and he just got busted for stealing luggage at the airport, and he has no experience with nuclear energy. But they put him in charge for diversity, transgenderism. This is what this means. How diverse is your workplace? Not how qualified you are. 
How freakish can you be to get a job? Social criteria, employee relations and diversity, working conditions. Oh, Twitter. Elon Musk just found out at $400 a day to have three squares provided to his Twitter employees, plus a lounge, plus all kinds of amenities, gym, video games. How does that work out for you? Production is down while these people are sitting there drinking their lattes and everything else and banning people off the social network. He shut that down and production has gone up by getting rid of all the freeloaders, the nut jobs. Funding for underserved communities. Where have you heard that? That is under the FEMA rules and regulations here in the United States. Administrator Chriswell has said, we will take care of underserved communities first, meaning minority, minority communities, gay and homosexual communities, lesbian communities, or other minority groups that may have hit with a natural catastrophe. They get service first to equalize the improper balance of people who have nice homes and live in good communities and work hard. We want to balance that out. Now, on this last one, she said, no, that's never happened. It's not first come, first serve. It's whoever needs it. She's a liar. It's in their, It's in FEMA. They've adopted that rules. She's a liar. And this is all part of ESG. And conflict in the workplace. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't like this person who is a freak, dresses like a freak, acts like a nut job, and you're not going to have conflict because you're saying, wait a minute, this is a men's restroom and you're a woman who wants to be a man. I don't want you standing next to me observing what I'm doing or in the stall next to me. Yeah, that's going to cause a problem. But according to ESG, you have to meet those standards. But it gets better. It gets better. It gets better. Governance, the tax strategy. How are you going to pay more taxes? Who are you going to tax more? We're going to soak the rich. That's communism, pure and simple. Executive remuneration, corruption and bribery. We can't have any of that. We can't. Executives don't get the golden parachute, which they shouldn't. But if they're, if, especially if they run the company into the ground, if they're making a profit and everybody's happy and they're following all the rules, why not reward good leadership? But if you run a company into the ground, file bankruptcy, why should you get a golden parachute when everybody else loses their job? You shouldn't. Corruption and bribery and broad diversity in the executive position. Never mind whether you're qualified or not. You get to be an executive. And then we'll figure it out from there because you're a minority. You're a diverse. You choose to be different. So we're going to promote you into an executive position and watch what happens. That's part of ESG. And that's where BlackRock and all these others, Vanguard, are investing our money into this to ruin this nation, to be in compliant with the United Nations Agenda 2030 and the climate change. Let's put the farmers out of business that feed America. Let's put the farmers, the cattle ranchers, that feed America out of business. Same with hog farmers, chicken ranchers, turkey farms, everything else. If you're not growing sustainable food, meaning lettuces and everything else that they deem renewable energy, we're going to put you out of business. That's how hideous and awful the way this thing is going. And we're going to have to fight to save our lives our livelihoods, and everything else. Now, just to let you know where I'm getting this information, you can go to the United Nations website right on there, and here are the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, also known as SDGs, to transform, and this is what they say, to transform our world into what these people want, not what I want, not what my neighbor wants. It's what they want and what they deem is best for you. You better sit up and pay attention. You better start calling these congressmen and senators and demanding 
to shut down this investment in these people and don't comply with this. Some of these 17, I'm just going to skip over, but others are very relevant. No poverty. Wow, what a lofty goal. No poverty. Everybody is above board and living wealthy. How's that going to happen? By taking away from those who have and giving it to those who don't. Sorry, there's always going to be poverty. There's always will be poverty simply because of the location you live. But they're fixing that through forced migration. That's how they're going to relieve poverty. Taking those people from South America and bringing them here in the United States, paying their way through the United Nations, paying their way here, giving them clothes, giving them food, giving them money, giving them cell phones, putting them here in the United States and say, there you go, you just upgraded. Take from the people here in the United States. The doctors, all the stuff, the grocery stores, take from them and you can have what they have. That's how they're going to equalize poverty. Zero hunger. You think closing 3,000 farms in the Netherlands is going to eliminate hunger? Quite the opposite. Good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality. There you go. Clean water and sanitation. Who's against that? You got to have something in there that people say, yeah, I agree with. Everybody should have clean water and have a restroom or some sort so you don't pollute your own house. Affordable, clean energy. There you go, folks. Wind and solar power, electric cars. Decent work and economic growth. Who doesn't want to have a decent job where you're not abused and mistreated and everything else and you're happy in your work? Industry and infrastructure. Wow, where have you heard that? How about build back better? Let's take from those people and make it a false claim that you're building better infrastructure. You have an upgraded electric system since the 70s, but you want to have Electric cars, that is not sustainable. You want to put up massive wind farms, but you don't want it off of Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket because you're going to block somebody's view of the ocean. Right. It's a lie, folks. It's a lie. Reduced inequality. There you go. Everybody has to be equal. The, the basic tenement of communism. And mind you, China is exempt. China is exempt. Sustainable cities and communities. Green New Deal, wind and solar. Okay, folks, green new cities. They're going to shut down the farmlands and they're going to build housing, apartments that are going to be wind and solar paneled out in the urban and rural areas once they close down the farms. That's their goal. Moving them from the cities out to the rural Responsible consumption consumption and production. Climate action. There you go. Climate change. What can we do to screw somebody's life up today because you're not meeting their standards? Hey, John Kerry, why don't you put away your private jet and fly like regular people? But you won't do that because you're a hypocrite. Same with all these people. They're liars and fakes. Yes, I'm upset and I'm angry. And you should be too. Because these people are creating this change. Life below water, underwater cities, caring for reefs, caring for the oceans. We got to stop polluting the oceans. We got to care for that. We're going to live in cities under the water so we don't pollute the earth, where we can just watch fishes swim by and live in harmony. Life on land, the stewardship of the land. Oh no, cattle rancher, you're abusing the land. Oh, no, tree harvester, lumber mill companies. You're cutting down too many trees. Same with you, you big industrial farmers. You're creating too much nitrogen. We're going to shut you down. And only certain people are going to be allowed to walk in the metro parks along the trail, trespassing on people's property. Peace and justice, strong institutions. Remember, China's exempt from this. They're not shutting down their concentration camps. They've, they haven't stopped disappearing people. Same with Russia. The Ukraine war. Oh, yeah, we got to have that. And partnership to achieve all these goals. Well, the only people that have signed on to this are the people like Joe Biden who have promised, promised 
money to countries to give up fossil fuels, such as Egypt, Indonesia. It's our money, $20 million to Indonesia to help them go solar, to get off fossil fuels. Everybody's got their hand out, and it's all a scam. They're going to create the food shortages on purpose. They're going to create the energy shortages on purpose. They are going to force you out of your farms on purpose. And you better be prepared to fight back. Understand what these are saying. When you hear ESG on the economic news, know what they're talking about. Know the companies. You already have attorney generals, especially down in Florida, saying no more ESG investment. We're withdrawing all of it. We're not supporting our own demise. Wake up. It's a lot to grasp. But this is what's going on. Each and every day, they're, they're after it. And we're sitting by saying, oh, well, you know, I wonder what's going to happen. Get after it. Be educated. Know how to prepare for this. Know who to contact and say, no, you don't. If you're going to do this, if you're going to teach this to our kids, we want you out. Get ready. Mandatory buybacks on land transfers to here. Mandatory buybacks on guns and everything else. They've already flowed to that idea. It's worldwide. Get ready. It's going to be a battle, folks. Thank you for sticking with us to the end. I appreciate you. I certainly do thank you. I know it's a little long, but there's a lot going on, and it's very involved. Know what they're talking about. Understand how it affects you and what you can do about it. You do have the right to fight back. Voice your opinion. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Please continue to do so. Refer this channel. Everything I tell you can be found. Look on the look on the United Nations website for the 17 goals. They'll tell you right there, right to your face. How wonderful it'll be not to own anything and you'll like it. Klaus Schwab. Get yourself right with God. Ask for forgiveness. Get baptized, submerged in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Greg out.